Hello Internet, you lovely people, and welcome to another tutorial video for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Today we're going to be talking about gathering raw materials using smashing, deconstruction, disassembly, and butchery. All four of them are relatively straightforward commands, but we will talk about the benefits of each and when to use them. I will also provide some examples of when I use the different features in the game. As you play the game, you will eventually find that you need something. There's always going to be something that you need, and most of the time when I need something, Something in the game it's either for construction or for crafting now obviously going out and looting the world is the best way to obtain most things but you will eventually want to craft or construct something yourself which is going to require you to harvest some raw materials and you will harvest most of those raw materials using smashing deconstruction butchering and disassembling smashing and deconstruction are used on furniture and terrain butchering and disassembling are used specifically on items all of them have their upsides and downsides and sometimes you will need to choose one over the other to get a specific material. That's what we'll be explaining in this video. Hopefully that makes sense. There are other ways you can obtain raw materials like cutting down trees just using a saw or an axe or whatever, but a lot of the time you're going to be harvesting them using these commands. And we're talking about this now because we will probably be covering the crafting menu in an upcoming video, and again crafting will often require these raw materials. So first up, let's talk about smashing and deconstruction. Again, these are used on furniture and terrain. Smashing is low tech and is used to gain raw materials, but deconstruction is when you carefully take something apart to gather more complex materials. So for example, you can smash a table to get splintered wood and some planks, but deconstructing that table will then give you something a little bit more complex like wooden panels. Smashing is faster but yields fewer materials, whereas deconstruction takes quite a long time by comparison, but it is necessary to obtain certain more advanced, more complex items. Anyway, Anyway, let's talk about smashing first in a lot of detail. Smashing is performed by pressing the lowercase s key and then selecting the tile that you want to smash. Smashing is used specifically on furniture terrain, I know I keep saying that but some people seem to be confused by that, and it doesn't really affect most items. In fact, the only items that I know smashing actually interacts with are corpses, which we covered in our video about zombie resurrection, and also some glass items are affected when you smash a tile that they are on. If you smash a tile that contains jars, for instance, they will be broken, so try not to smash your collection of jams by mistake. But those are the only items that I know of that can be smashed. You will mainly be smashing things like a couch or a table or a window or a small tree and so on and so forth. Those are the sort of things that I mean when I say furniture or terrain. So when you try to smash a valid smashable thing, there is a simple formula going on behind the scenes to determine if you successfully destroy the thing or not. The game takes your character's current strength and adds that to your current weapon's bash damage. This value is then compared to a value that gets assigned to the thing that you're smashing. The biggest thing in this formula that you can control is your weapon. It is by far the biggest variable and the highest impact number of the whole equation. Even low strength characters can smash fairly well since strong and weak characters rarely have more than a few points difference to their strength value. On a weapon though, the number can be all the way from zero all the way up to something like 80 for a heavy sledgehammer, which I think is the strongest bash weapon in the game. And then the other major factor in doing this is the thing that you're trying to smash. Each furniture and terrain has two different values assigned to them called STR min and STR max. When you smash an item, a number is chosen between the min and max value. Then your strength plus your bash damage is compared to that value. If you beat it, great, then you have successfully smashed that furniture. If you fail, however, you have not smashed it. If it is impossible for your score to beat the minimum requirement to smash this furniture or terrain, there will eventually be a message printed in the log telling you that you don't seem to be damaging the target. Even if this message is not printed, remember that this is a randomly assigned value in a range, so it may still be borderline impossible. For instance, let's say that my combined bash score is 31, and the furniture I'm trying to smash has a range of 30 to 150. So yes, it would technically be possible that I could smash that item, so it will never print the message saying that I'm not damaging it. However, it will be very unlikely that the value will fall into the area that I need it to. I will not succeed until the game randomly selects the lowest possible values I could be smashing for a really long time before I get lucky in that way. Alright, moving away from math now, uh, sometimes when you smash furniture or terrain, it will then change into other terrain. For example, smashing a chain link fence will remove the chain part but leave a fence post behind. If you smash a window, it will change the terrain to a 
a broken window that has glass shards, and sometimes you can continue smashing whatever the terrain has been converted to. In the example of the window, you can smash the window again to remove the glass shards, and then you could smash it yet again to possibly destroy the entire window frame. But anyway, that's a basic explanation of how smashing works. In general, smashing something will yield fewer materials than deconstruction, which we're going to talk about next. Smashing is for sure the low-tech solution, and it is obviously destructive. If your goal is to get every bit of material that you can, or if you're seeking out more complex materials, then deconstruction is the better choice. However, smashing is fast, and it usually only takes a few seconds, whereas deconstructing that furniture might take you several hours. I will smash things when I don't care about the end result. For instance, if I'm trying to gather firewood, I don't really care if I get every little scrap of wood because it's a plentiful material. So I will simply smash things so that I get those raw materials faster than deconstructing. If your goal is to smash something, grab a weapon with the highest bash value that you can find. In the old days, this meant finding a sledgehammer, which is still one of the best weapons you can use for this. However, we do now also have a craftable weapon called a homewrecker, which is very easy to make and also has very high bash damage. The homewrecker will allow you to deal with most basic things that you would want to smash, such as doors or furniture to gather wood for your fire. And that is the majority of what I use smash for. I will just smash furniture for wood. This is also a useful command for when you're trying to quickly enter a house, smashing a window is the fastest way to get in most buildings. Just remember to smash twice, once to break the window, and a second time to clear the glass shards so you don't cut yourself when you move through. Other smashable things of note would be chain link fences, lockers, and shelves. These are a good way to gather metal and pipes and wires, things like that, that are pretty valuable and necessary for certain crafts. And you can also smash vehicles if you have a good enough weapon. This is a great way to get surplus metal of different sizes. And then finally, I will also smash boulders. With a slightly above average strength and a home wrecker in your hands, you will be able to smash both small and medium boulders which yield rocks. And rocks are something that you will need when you want to make a rock forge and a charcoal kiln. Those are the things that I use smash for most in the game. But anyway, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's talk about deconstruction. In order to deconstruct something, you have to use the construction menu, which is bound to the asterisk key by default. There are two options here. One is for simple furniture, which are things that can be taken apart without tools. And there's another option for more involved furniture, which requires the screwdriving one quality and prying one quality. If you're on an older version of the game, it used to be screwdriving and a hammer, but we changed things up. Now, the easiest way to know which of these options to use is to simply stand next to the thing that you want to deconstruct and check this menu. The item that is white is the one that you can use and the grayed out option is the one that you can't. Some amount of common sense can also be applied. Uh, for example, removing a mattress from a bed would not require tools and is therefore simple deconstruction. However, it's worth noting that not all furniture or terrain can be deconstructed. Mostly, these are oversights. Most things should ideally have the option and they just don't, but may get that option in the future. Now, there's not a whole lot to explain about deconstruction. It's generally a straightforward process, but there's one main issue that needs to be touched on. When you go to deconstruct a piece of furniture, you will have no idea what materials you will receive from it. It does not tell you anywhere in the game what you will get from that deconstruction. And this is kind of a problem. I do wish this would change, and hey, it might change in the future. However, we do have a website called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Cataclysm, also called HHG, which I've talked about a lot in this series. There will be a link to this website in the description down below. And if you look up a furniture item, you will be able to see what it gives you when you deconstruct it. Now, the other main thing to note about deconstruction is that you can stop in the middle of a project by pressing your pass turn key, either five or period. This will stop the deconstruction, but it won't cancel it, allowing you to come back later and resume where you left off. You can resume this deconstruction by using the lowercase e key to examine the tile, which will have you pick up where you left off. When you try to resume, it will display the percentage of the project that you've already completed. And additionally, while deconstructing, this percentage is shown at the top of the screen as it progresses. And then finally, you do need light in order to properly deconstruct something. If a furniture item is in the dark, you may possibly be able to drag it around using the capital G key until you get it to some light. Otherwise, you're going to need to bring a flashlight or something like that. 
So when will you most often be using deconstruction? Well, honestly, I almost never use this feature. It takes too long and there just aren't that many things that I need to deconstruct for materials. There's really only one time when I take furniture apart like this and that is for electronics components. Arcade machines can be found in pizza shops and other random locations and can be deconstructed for a variety of electronics parts like power converters and circuit boards. You can also get a lot of these materials from computer terminals that are around the world. Even if a terminal is damaged, it can still be taken apart for these valuable pieces. But that's really the only time that I use this in the game. If there's other high value things to deconstruct, drop them in my comments. It might help somebody out. I really can't think of anything. Let's move on though. Uh, let's talk now about butchery and disassembly. Now, like I said before, butchery and disassembly are used on items specifically, not for furniture or terrain. Butchery is a lot like smashing in that it allows you to break an item down to its base parts, but it doesn't provide more complex components, whereas disassembling something gives you those more complex parts. And of course, the main function of butchery is to harvest meat from animals. That's not the focus of this video. We'll talk about that some other time. This video is specifically for taking things apart to get raw materials. Now you butcher something by dropping it on the ground, standing on the same tile, and using the capital B key to open the butcher menu. This will display a list of options and what what is displayed here will depend on what items are at your feet. The important thing here is seeing which items say cut up. This is the language the game uses to tell you that the item will be butchered rather than disassembled. Here, for example, is a sample image of the butcher menu. You'll see that I have a long sleeve shirt at my feet. And the butcher menu offers me two options. One just says long sleeve shirt and the other says cut up long sleeve shirt. If I select the first option, it will be disassembled. But if I select the cut up option, it will be butchered. A lot of people do ask about this because it's not particularly clear. Since it doesn't say disassemble, it's just the name of the item. An easy way to note the difference if you ever forget is to look at the time required. Disassembling an item will always, always take much longer than butchering it. Now in order to cut things up you will require a tool with cutting quality of 1. This basically just means you need a knife. If you have a pile of items at your feet you will also see an option that says cut up everything. This will cut up every single item on that tile if, it's, if it can be possibly butchered. And when you butcher an item, you will receive raw materials based on what that item is made of. In other words, if an item is plastic, you will probably receive some plastic chunks. If it's leather, you're going to obtain some leather. Now, if the item has more than one material, butchering will give you a mix of those materials. So a cotton and leather item will give both cotton and leather in return. Additionally, butchering items factors in the health of the item. So if you find a very damaged item and then you butcher it, you're going to get very few materials, if anything, at all. The game's actually a little too punishing with this, in my opinion. An item that only has a half bar of HP tends to give you nothing most of the time. Now, to my understanding, the game also does factor in player skill when you butcher items, but I've never really seen that confirmed, and I wasn't able to dig up any code relating to it, so sorry I don't know more about that. The biggest factor by far, at least, uh, you know, anecdotally in my own experience, is item health. A damaged item will very rarely give any materials. And I was going to say that there's no way for me to tell you what you will get when you butcher an item, but that's not strictly true. Basically, when you butcher an item or cut it up in this way, it will always give you the most raw form of whatever material that item is constructed of. So if the item is plastic and you cut it up, you will most likely get plastic chunks, and leather will give you leather patches. What this means is that no matter what you are cutting up, you will always get the most base level material from that item. If you want more complex items, again, that is where disassembly comes in, which we're going to talk about next. It's just important to remember that butchery will never yield these more advanced components. You will never get a power converter by cutting up an electric but all right, now let's talk about disassembly and good God, this is turning out way longer than I expected. Hopefully everything has made sense up until this point. I'm feeling a little less confident with this video than some of the others in the series. Now, as I said, disassembly is similar to cutting something up in that it only affects items and not furniture or terrain. Disassembling will give you more complex materials. So if you were to cut up, say, an electronic, it might give you plastic chunks. But if you disassembled that same object, it might give you some RAM or a power converter or some more complex component. 
Now you can disassemble through the butcher menu as I mentioned previously. If the entry in this menu does not say cut up, then it will use disassembly. And you can look at the time investment as well. Cutting up is very fast, but disassembly is very slow. You can also disassemble something from its item entry, which we're, we'll talk about here in a second. If you have many items at your feet and you're doing it through the butchery menu, you will see two options. Disassemble everything once or disassemble everything recursively. Now disassembling everything once will take apart every possible possible item currently on the pile and then it will stop. Disassembling everything recursively will disassemble everything on the pile and then continue disassembling the component parts you receive from that initial disassembly. God, that's confusing. To be honest, don't even worry about it. You will almost never disassemble everything in a pile because it will often take you several hours or several days to do so. I have not used this option literally in years of playing the game. It's been a long time. It was more practical back before taking stuff apart took hours and hours and hours. You can also disassemble something through its item entry. You can check an item's entry to see what tools are required and what materials can be received when you take apart the item. And you can do this by opening your inventory screen using the lowercase i key, then move your indicator to the item and press enter. This will then open the item's entry on the left side of the screen. And the information we're looking for is displayed partway down in this entry. And it, depending on the item, you might have to scroll down. You can do that with the page down key. You can also disassemble the item directly directly from this screen by pressing the capital D key. Now if no information is given and the disassemble control is grayed out in this menu, it means that that item cannot be disassembled. It's worth noting that disassembling items will use different tools depending on the item. Last I checked, for instance, taking apart a robot requires a lot more tools than taking apart a t-shirt. If you can't pick up the item, say it's a large robot corpse, you can instead open the pickup menu as though you were going to pick up the body, highlight the robot, and then press the lowercase e key. This will open a smaller display of information for that item where it will tell you what is needed to disassemble that thing. Disassembly also factors your skills to determine what items you will receive. If you try to disassemble a laptop with no skills, you will get fewer valuable materials than if you had a 6 in your electronics skill. Now unfortunately there's no way to see what skill is use for that particular item, you can only use your common sense and hope that it's the right thing. Usually though, if the item can be crafted, it will use the same skill as the crafting recipe, which you can look up on HHG. However, again, not all items can be crafted, so this is only of limited help. Now additionally, disassembling an item may teach you how to make that item. Again, this is based on your skills. If you have an appropriate skill level, you have a chance to learn the item's recipe. This only happens for items that are actually craftable. If it is possible, there will be a printed message in the log saying that you could possibly learn the recipe by disassembling more of that item. In my experience, you will gain most items from books, and this feature is, is interesting, but it's not particularly useful. Let's say we wanted to learn how to craft a flashlight, for instance. Well, I could disassemble flashlights to learn the recipe, but I also could just use the flashlights instead of disassembling them. There's no benefit to one that I would craft myself, so it's not terribly valuable in my opinion. Hopefully that all makes sense. I really didn't realize how difficult it would be to talk about all of this until I realized that a lot of this information isn't displayed in the game. There just isn't much information displayed for cutting up items specifically. And again, for the record, butchering things for meat is handled completely differently. There are a few special options for harvesting meat. We're going to have to talk about all of those when we get to talking about gathering food. And also there are other ways in the game to gather materials for crafting. Like I said, looting is a reliable way of getting certain things like tools, which are sometimes used as components for crafts. Or if you were making a vehicle welder, for instance, you could harvest welders that you find out in the world. And if you just wanted water, let's say, to craft beverages, you wouldn't disassemble things, you would just go fill a tank from a swimming pool or something like that. If you wanted logs, you would go cut down a tree using an axe. So there are definitely other ways to gather materials from disassembly and all that jazz. I just wanted to cover the most common ways in in this video. Anyway, man, hopefully that all made sense. Butchery is low tech, cutting something up, and is used to gather raw materials like chunks of plastic or patchwork cloth. Disassembling something is a more carefully executed process, and I most frequently only use it to take apart electronics. These things unfortunately come down to game experience. As you play, you will learn what items to target to get specific materials. And the items in the game are so vast in number that it is impossible to offer any real explanation beyond saying, hey, just use your 
common sense. I really am sorry about that. I feel terrible saying that in a tutorial video, but I can't think of a better way to explain things. Now, regardless of all of that, hopefully this video has given you some insight into smashing, deconstruction, butchery, and disassembly. Hit me with a thumbs up if the video helped. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Not only am I trying to deliver information to you, but the comments also can be helpful if I've missed anything. Please post and let other people know what's going on. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully everything made sense. And I'll be back with more tutorial content in the near future, and I'll see you next time.